So bioinformatics is a science where we integrate computer science, genetics, and genomics. You know, because of the Human Genome Project, lots of science today is done in a molecular way. And today, measuring things in a molecular way means collecting a lot of data. We have amazing technologies now to do this kind of work. So for example, we have a technology called a gene chip, which is just the size of your thumbnail that measures every gene in the genome, quantitates it. Now, if that's not amazing enough, that's a 15-year-old technology today. So many people use that kind of technology now that they're required to put that kind of data out on the internet of all places. The repository, for example, run at NIH, has almost 400,000 of these microarrays publicly available, doubling or tripling each year. What I, I like to say in uh, talks all the time, a high school kid today who needs to do a science fair project, say for 11th or 12th grade, can go to these repositories and get over 20,000 samples of, say, breast cancer just as easily as he or she can find a song on iTunes today. So imagine what the scientist needs to do with this kind of data. That's what bioinformatics is all about. We not only help those researchers that are using these kinds of technologies to figure out the signal that's hiding in the noise, but more importantly is that we can launch into asking new kinds of questions that have just never been asked before because we're newly enabled with all of this kind of public data. Let me tell you how bioinformatics can impact children's health. We've been working with investigator Minnie Sarwal, who's a pediatric nephrologist here at uh, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Now, she works with kids who get new kidneys transplanted because they have problems with their old ones. Now, one of the problems that can happen after getting a new kidney is that the body wakes up one morning and realizes, this isn't part of me. Let's start to reject this or take it out. Now, rejection is not painful. The kid might not even know that this is happening. So we in pediatrics have to survey for that, screen for that, to make sure that rejection isn't happening. And today's technology is to stick a long needle in to see if there's any rejection taking place based on pathology. Obviously, we would love to have a blood test for this, something I could tell us at an early stage that rejection is taking place. And what that means is to take those biopsy samples, and instead of just looking at them under the microscope, but actually put them on these gene chips to see which genes are changing. So we help an investigator like Minnie Sarwell and many others to figure out which of those genes are the significant ones changing their experiments to help her come up with new, better tests for kidney transplant rejection. Now, taking this to another level, the bioinformaticists in us realized, you know, there must be something in common between when kids reject their kidney transplant or their heart transplant or their liver transplant or their lung transplant. There must be something in common there. So we go back to the public databases and realize that some of that data is already publicly available, and we intersect those to figure out what's a common denominator, what's the core response of rejecting any organ, not just kidneys. And we'll take that to the next step now to come up with new diagnostic blood tests or even urine tests to look for this, this kind of rejection taking place. So how, do we, how does bioinformatics help kids? In the end, for us, it's coming up with novel therapeutics, novel diagnostics that we can use in these kids that no one would have ever discovered before.